On today's show, have the Dallas Mavericks fully embraced bully ball? What's their new formula that they need to win games now? And what's the most concerning thing about the Mavericks in the last 14 games of the season? We'll talk about that and more today. It's Locked On Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Locked On Mavericks Podcast. Dallas Mavericks are NBA champions. I don't believe you shouldn't be here. And welcome. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Engstead, media member and NBA channel manager for the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for being part of the show. Make it Lockdown Maps your first listen today where the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day on any podcast platform you listen to, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, cast box all kinds of stuff comment on youtube let me know what's one question you have for the last 14 games of the season today's episode is brought to you by linkedin jobs linkedin jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on nba that's linkedin.com slash locked on nba to post your job for free terms and conditions apply and joining me as always co-host writer contributor mavs.com studio 41 once and always, the we back boy, the one more thing king. What you got for me, Isaac Harris? I'm mad because you didn't let it ride. What are we doing? Why didn't I you let it ride? ride? We're two days after a Kyrie insane. <laughs> I, I kind of just want to like. I feel like we should just we should just make a we should make a video of just us back and forth on a Nerf goal, just trying to like do the shot <laughs> until I have we. A hoop here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so anyway, I was expecting you to let it ride, but I'm glad you're not letting it ride anymore. Except with if you're slightly. watching on YouTube or listening and I sound a little different, look a little different. That's that's because Cuban finally found me and I'm on the run. He he, he Mavs finally man found, found you. me. <laughs> Mavs man <laughs> found, no, Mavs man is a, is part of the raccoon squad. Pensac found you. <laughs> Jason Kidd. Jason Kidd found me after I said that he shouldn't be the coach anymore. And uh, yeah, and this is what happens when your takes are too fiery. You, you get uh, you get ousted, and now you're on the run. That's where I am right now. <laughs> you look like it, it's like you're the guy in the movie who just gets too far with the conspiracy theories, and now you're just on the run in some Not basement. Not even a movie. Right. This is like the same. This is the same setup that Edward Snowden had when he was in Russia. Like. Yeah. <laughs> I do want to give a shout out right off the top to our guy named Sully. So I gave him a shout out uh, not too long ago on the corner three. Uh, Sully is a, a freshman in Coppell, and he he came up uh, to uh, to my job, and we sat down and we did a little interview about media world and podcast world big Mavs fan one of the biggest Mavs fans I probably know and uh just want to give a shout out to him because he he's the best Sully keep it up you're gonna kill it in this game good get after it Sully let's go that's what's up uh today's episode we will get into I got five questions for Isaac to talk and by the way if you haven't listened if you haven't listened when Isaac was part of the show that's amazing but Isaac was co-host with me for six years he covers the Mavs again for Mavs.com Studio 41 and now back we're back in the saddle baby I've got five questions for him I want to know how concerning the Mavs three-point problem is they're not hitting threes they're not taking as many threes that is big of a problem as some people think it is we'll talk about the most important games of the last stretch of the season and then one thing we want to see the last 14 games of the season but I want to start here Isaac have the Mavs fully embraced being a big bully ball team because they haven't been this for as long as I mean you and I have covered this team they have not been the bigger batter we're gonna be beat you in the paint we're gonna get rebounds 21 offensive rebounds against the Nuggets the other day like they just haven't been that team do you believe they fully embrace this new identity um do I, do I think they fully embraced it I think here here's the thing to be one of the best teams in the league you had to win different ways and that's the thing. I, I don't know if they fully embraced a new identity. I think they've fully embraced an option or a form of their identity they just haven't had uh, in previous years. That you've been missing this ability to go big or this ability to bully some teams sometimes that, that just hasn't that hasn't been an arrow in your quiver for a few years now, for a while now. That I mean that we're making an opposing coach going rebound the ball. And it's like, when, when is that ever happening? And uh, yeah, I, I just think that's, it's a, I don't think it's their new identity. I think their identity is still the same. It's Luka Doncic and it's Kyrie Irving. And Scheme. 
I, I think we could go on. I mean, we could go on a whole different, like whole episode on Kyrie Irving right now, because I think this is one of the biggest talking points of this whole team that I think right now is the best stretch of basketball Kyrie Irving's played over a course of a couple weeks stretch. Like from all, from all parts of his game that he's playing right now, not saying this whole season, but I'm saying right now, you look at his assist totals over the past three games, nine, 10, 11 assists. You look at the defense that he's playing right now. You look at just, I mean, he's healthy. I mean, I feel like I've heard the stat, you know, more than once over the past few days that his is 18 straight games that he's played in a row. It's the longest, you know, streak for him since 2016 or 17. And I think he's healthy. He's play, hitting on all like facets of his game, how he's connecting with Luca, some of the shots and stuff he's pulling offensively. I think this stretch right now, I'm saying it's a shorter stretch, a few weeks here, two, three weeks stretch is some of, if not the best basketball Kyrie Irving's played in his career. I can't say it's the best in his career. We've seen some, we've seen him put down You're gonna say 40 points. Cleveland game. He had, a, he had a week where he had 40 points in a game seven and hit the, one of the greatest shots in NBA history. Like I, I still think that, that level, that that level is on a different level than where he is right now. But like, I'm not saying he, peak. I'm saying a stretch, like how he's playing right now. Well, I mean, the peak I, was in the, the peak was in the stretch. Like that was the stretch. Yeah, I mean, when he peaked, yeah. that stretch was part of was like was a stretch. Uh, but he is playing. He's playing really well, and he's shooting the ball really well. Why do you hate uh, Kyrie? <laughs> Uh, you know, just I'm just one of those. I'm I'm from I'm secretly from Boston. I'm one of those Boston media members that just hates <laughs> Kyrie. Like you know who you, who you know who they are out there. But, <laughs> no, I, Kyrie's been playing really well and fitting in exactly where the Mavericks need him to. And you know he's he's had a couple of he's had a couple of not great games in this stretch that you're talking about. It's, that's why I'm not fully super on board. But he's shooting 50, 40, 90 for the season. Like he's been he's been really good yeah. overall uh, and been you know an insane second for the Mavericks the the, back to the bully ball thing though because with him like like Luca and Kyrie kind of allow them to to be this and play these type of guys where you can play a Gafford and a Maxi two guys that can't get their own shot and Maxi's not really spacing the floor that much anymore Gafford's not at all but you can play that when you have two guys that can just get their own shot whenever like your offense can come if you have two guys that can create it with zero space I mean you think even about the the Kyrie shot to end the game he had no space to get any of that stuff off like to turn the corner yeah. the hesitation against Jokic and then literally like you slow it down and I, we've all done this every single person listening to this has done this the next day after Kyrie's shot you went back and you watched the video and you just slowed it down frame by frame and you're like looking at each part of it and there's a point where like if Kyrie was a half second slow Jokic blocks that shot even if it's a lefty floater mm. like it's it's so close right there and so to have a player that can operate in no space like that allows you to play some of these guys more and get, look at Gafford's minutes you know as the, the example of it first nine games since the trade Gafford was averaging 16.8 minutes a game he only had two starts in the last seven games he's averaging 23.7 minutes a game with six starts they've put him they've, they've played him a little bit more they've played lively the exact same amount they've played Maxi in, in a four role instead of just the you know the stretch five that he's been playing I think they've embraced this like just in the last couple of weeks or so they've embraced finally who, what we think this team's going to be yeah i mean just i mean what if <laughs> you look at the upgrade from the big man unit last year to this year and you look at beginning last season going into the season you had javel mcgee you had christian wood you had dwight powell Oof. And you obviously had Maxi, and then throughout the year, you know, their injuries, different stuff. This year, out of those three guys, when I checked it the other day, those three guys have started nine games this year. And like that was the full room last year. <laughs> so to upgrade that, so to upgrade that to Daniel Gafford and Derek Lively. And now you have a healthy Maxi, and Dwight doesn't even play. But just what a difference you have. Both Gafford and Lively, top 10 in the league in dunks so far. And it's like just it, to, the ability to just switch one out and then, oh, dang, here comes Derek Lively. All right, well, Gafford's back in. And it's like, 
it's so much fun to have out there to have somebody defending the paint and obviously rebounding rebounding matters nick and what you know, <laughs> what you heard it here first that's the first time you've ever mentioned rebounding ever in the history of this show i've never talked about it on this show it's so funny when they <laughs> win when mavs win games and they out re rebound the opponent I will. It's inevitable. I get tweets, <laughs> but it was like on the last episode when it was me and Reggie. You had been gone. You've been gone for months, and we still get hey tell Isaac that rebounds matter. <laughs> it, it's my favorite thing now because the other day they lose to OKC, but they won the rebounding battle, and then like a few weeks ago they lost the rebounding battle by twenty to Detroit, <laughs> and and clobbered <laughs> Detroit. And I was like, hey, this kind of just proves my point, guys. That it's just it's not the end all tell all. It matters, no, but it, no, we just turn a blind eye to those. Games games and just only focus on the ones that, that prove our narrative right my dog is freaking out over here yes i know rebounds matter honey <laughs> the dog's trying to give it honey's my dog not my wife <laughs> <laughs> Coming up. let's talk about the new formula isaac and i used to talk a lot about the mavs formula of they've got to make more threes than the other team they've got to take put up more threes it became a big theme throughout the 2022 playoffs and so let's talk about the mavs new formula for this team let's talk about what that could be coming up Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. It's not just a job board. It has a vast network of more than a billion different professionals that you can have access to, sort through, and it makes the process really easy. LinkedIn does all that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that many qualified candidates. So many, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified 86. candidate within 24 hours. Just 24 hours. Just 24 hours. That's it. LinkedIn knows that small businesses wear so many different hats, so you don't have time to put all the resources and all the time that you need to sorting through candidates, trying to find somebody that has exactly the qualifications you want. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockdown MBA. Again, linkedin.com slash lockdown MBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions, they do apply. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us on Lockdown Maps, being part of the show, part of the Raccoon Squad, listening every day. Appreciate each and every one of you for checking out what we've got on the show. Uh, I'll be back with Slightly. Put tomorrow. me backstage one more time. Break, I'll be back slightly tomorrow, breaking down, breaking down the next Mavs game against the Spurs, and uh, and we'll be back through all throughout the week as well. Isaac is here. Isaac has returned, the co-host, the prodigal co-host that was. Uh, all right, Isaac, by the way, you know, I still say, all right, Isaac, every every time I go solo, right? Yes, people tell me a lot. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's my hey, do you know that, that Nick still says, all right, Isaac? No. <laughs> it's my bit that I stick with uh, forever now because it was so funny. It warms my heart. I'm asking questions about the Mavs' last 14 games of the season. What do you think about this, this idea of the new formula? You and I spent a ton of time in that 2022 playoff run talking about the three-point formula. I'm like, all right. You just got to get up more threes than the other team. And honestly, like five or six or 10 more threes than the other team because the numbers have to match up. Is the new formula, is it offensive rebounds? Is it just rebounding because rebounds matter? Is it points in the paint? Like, what do we think the new formula for the Mavs winning is? Getting to the paint. I mean, we, you know, I, I'd probably need to, you know, get more stats on that to back it up just to, off the cuff answer here but you know 62 well, points like in the paint numeric for... i'm not asking for a numeric formula <laughs> just, just like just what do we think is the most like the to, what do they need to emphasis emphasize the most i guess yeah i mean i i just think it's getting to the basket and not settling i mean i think that's the biggest yeah. thing i mean i the real answer and i just didn't want to give the same answer is it it's to be able to have different formulas like to be able to have games mm -hmm. that all right, if Luca's you know can't get into the paint, he's he's being guarded, which you know that's hardly ever. Luca, I mean Kyrie's mid range shots no, not going down the you know sideways you know shots that he's been draining lately. If those are not going down, you know how you're going to win by hitting some of these outside shots. Are you getting into the paint? They're they're doubling, and it's Derek Jones Jr., PJ, Josh Green, Maxi. These guys getting open shots, and then yeah, you might win games like that. That's when it comes playoff time. That you're going, you're going to have to have a game or two, maybe even a series, that you win because you hit, you get hot from the outside because teams are just collapsing so much and they're saying, you know what, I just, I dare you, 
we will lose by Derek Jones Jr. and PJ Washington corner threes. Like that's how we will lose this game. And that we will live with that. So I think you just have to have that ability. And right now they're showing they're showing the NBA and they're showing other teams like, hey, we don't have to live and die by the three. They're winning games now by not even hitting 10 threes because Luca and Kyrie can get into the get into the paint. And not just that. They actually have size down there that can finish. And with, you know, like I said a while ago, Gafford and Live would be in top 10 in the league in dunks. And how many, not to like throw shots at Dwight, but it's like how many times has Dwight gotten the ball down there and he's just getting clobbered, you know, or he's just he's just not big enough down there to just go up post Achilles and all that to just go up on yam on somebody like Gafford does or lively does or something like that. So I I think that's the biggest difference right now is their ability to score into the paint. And if you make teams like know or think that that's your formula, then you can go back to shooting the threes, but you got to have the versatility on it. Yeah. As far as like a, a new formula, I wish that there was one, but I think that the answer is is exactly what you said. It's that there are multiple formulas and that this team is not as one dimensional as they used to be, right? It used to just be, if you can't hit your threes, you're screwed. Like I, I was looking up a ton of three point numbers today before the trades Mavs played 52 games. They shot under 30% from three, seven times. Do you want to take a, a crack at their record in the seven games that they shot under 30% from three? Before the trades. One and six. Zero and seven. They did not win a game Ooh. shooting under 30% from three before the Ooh. trades. Since the trades, they played 16 games, and they've shot under 30% four times, which is a higher ratio there. They, you know, they've shot less than 30% four times in 16 games since the trades, which is not great. But they're three and one in those games. The wins against Denver the Warriors, the Wizards, and then the loss was to Boston, and you're going to lose that game no matter what you did, (laughs) it felt like. And so, but that answers the whole thing is like, when they don't, when their threes aren't going, they have other options to go to. They're not as one-dimensional as they used to be, and I think that's why the answer to the whole question is there's no real formula. And so, but I, now I want to go to is the three-point shooting concerning because it is it is going down. Like the amount of threes they're getting up, the uh, percentage they've only taken. 40 plus threes in five out of 16 games. Like they're taking less, they're hitting less. Just it feels like everybody else has been squeezed as far as who's a good three point shooter. Yeah, no, no, I'm not concerned about three point attempts because I think if they want to get open threes, they can get open threes. What, what I'm concerned about is the percentage is, you know, I, I think the number one thing, and I'm, I'm probably cutting into your last question, so I'm sorry, it, that I'm looking for over this final stretch of games is can PJ Washington find the outside shot and specifically the shot. And, you know, I, I did a, a video essay on him back last week. And, you know, one of the things on there, I feel like, all right, I can't ignore. Cause it's about him being like on paper. He's like this great role player for, for Luca and Kyrie. But also I'm like, I can't really ignore that. He's not shooting the ball very well. And so I'm like, yeah, he's struggling right now from the outside, but do you do you want to have hope for him right now that you can look? He's only been this is his fifth season in the league, which is kind of crazy to me that he came into the league after Luca. For some reason, I thought he was like he's been in the league. Well, they're the same like age, right? Years twenty five. So I know, but for some, I don't know. Anyway, you look at you know some of his his seasons up until now. He shot you know a thirty six you know percent season, a thirty seven percent season, a thirty eight percent season. So like he's got the volume there to shoot it that way. He's it's just not it's not falling right now. It's like it's like Tim. <laughs> um but but it's Tim the K. corner that's three. Like that's <laughs> that's the th- that's the thing PJ's gotta hit because if it if it sustains this way and it keeps on going then he's going to be Dorian 2.0 for teams and they're just going to dare him to shoot. And we're going to, we're going to see like stat lines like we've seen for those, you know, two games in a row there the other day to where it was, you know, one for seven and it was, you know, Oh, for seven from three. And it's like, I mean that, and it, it, that sucks because he's got it and it sucks even more because I think, I think overall he's the best defender they have on the team first versatility wise and just what he, all the intangible stuff he brings and his touch around the basket. Like you can't, you can't take him off the floor. Like you got to have him out there, but man, it's going to be hard for, for coach if he's not hitting threes. 
Yeah, coming up, let's talk about the the real problem with the with three point shooting. I do think that it's kind of an issue, so let's talk about that, and we'll talk about the most important games of the last stretch of the season. We'll get into all that and more coming up. Today's episode is brought to you by Stitch Fix. Stitch Fix has all kinds of clothing options for you. And if you want to refresh your wardrobe, check out Stitch Fix. They set you up with a stylist. I did this. I w- went through the process. And they show you all different kinds of combination of, of clothing. And you go through you say, I like this. I don't like this. I like this piece of clothing, this shirt, these pants, these shoes, this belt or whatever. I don't want shoes. I know Isaac is a person that loves shoes. And so you would probably not want Stitch Fix shoes, but you would want the pants and the belts and yeah shirts let's and do it like that and you can you can mix and match and do all that kind of stuff and I, I enjoyed the process you get a box sent to you and then you get to pick the stuff that you want and put send back the stuff that you don't want for free go check it out and see what you can get at stitch fix style that makes you feel as good as you look get started today at stitchfix.com slash locked on again stitchfix.com slash locked on to go and check out the stylist to see how you can easily upgrade your wardrobe with a professional stylist to help you find the new on trend favorites that will work for you stitchfix.com slash locked on All right, Isaac. Feels so good to say that to a real Isaac and not just to no one. The three-point problem for the Mavericks, it, it has kind of become a little bit of a problem. Even though they can still win games, I think that eventually that will need to come around. And I, I, <laughs> through the first, like, seven or so games of P.J. Washington's time here in Dallas, I was like, he's not going to shoot 19% from three. He's not. He's just not going to – well, he's shooting – 25 percent from as i say he's not <laughs> he's not shooting 19 percent, but he is shooting 25 percent. but it, it's coincided with he's shooting 25 percent on 5.4 attempts per game the only other role player taking more threes per game than him is tim we mentioned earlier who's shooting under 32 percent, 31.9 percent on 5.7 attempts so his attempts have gone way down because his minutes have gone down you know shot selection has been not that great but he's not hitting the ones he's taking either Josh Green was shooting pretty well, but now he's been out for a couple weeks. Or now he's going to be out for a couple weeks. Maxi Kleba is only shooting 24% on two, only two attempts a game for him. Derek Jones Jr. is shooting well, 41%, but only 1.8 attempts per game. Exum is shooting well, 45%, but only on one attempt per game. And he's turning down threes. Those are all the numbers since the trades have happened, by the way. But mm. Like those role players, like of those, let, let me just ask you this question: Of those three role players, Tim, PJ, and Maxi, which one do they need to go off the most? And like improve that shot, and which one do you think will actually happen? PJ by far, uh, because PJ's Eight. locked into, yeah, yeah, that that they need it because one, I think he's their most versatile defender. Two, he's like locked into 30, 35 minutes a night. I mean, that's why I was more focused on the PJ part of the you know the the trade deadline acquisitions because there's going to be games and we've already seen it in which Gafford might play like 10 minutes based off a matchup and that really might frustrate fans but they might go small and put maxi out there or you know something so but there's never there's never a game unless the outside shooting stuff continues into the playoffs there's never a game in which like a matchup is going to play pj off the floor so and that's where you just need his size. I mean, look what they were doing against Denver. I thought it was fascinating. And call me a homer. I think kid deserves some credit for some stuff in Denver. The checks, um, the checks clear either way. <laughs> um, one, Tim got the rebound after the Jamal Murray missed shot. And he, he started to take off for that oh game God. winner. You know who called timeout? <laughs> Jason Kidd. Jason Kidd's like, heck no. Um, my my head cannon, my head cannon of that is that Tim knew he was going to call a timeout. That, that's my head cannon. Well, Tim Tim would not have just like taken off <laughs> knowing that they had a timeout. He would have passed it to Kyrie or Luca for the shot. I don't think um, that would have happened, but I <laughs> but I thought something was fascinating, and this goes back to PJ. You know, they were defending Jokic a lot. I mean, there's a lot of stiffer stuff they did with Jokic, which was just really fun to see. They mucked it up. They made it ugly. And they brought timely doubles and stuff. But they were they were defending him with the four a lot, Maxi and PJ, and letting Gafford and Lively kind of be this, like, Romer help guy and not putting the bigger body on Jokic, but bringing that guy to kind of double or show. And just uh, and I, I thought that was just a brilliant move on kids part, just how to – I mean, you're Jokic is Jokic, but you can only do something like that if you got a guy who can at least hold his ground. And PJ is like, 
I mean, there's been times where he's guarding Murray out there. He's had times guarding SGA, and he's also trying to guard Jokic in the post and, and Wimby in the post. So, like, he's just a really versatile defender, and you just don't find those guys very often. Yeah, they they really need him to get going. Tim's the only, like, volume three-point shooter, though, that they could – like, if he could get going – then it then it would help your offense a lot because then all of a sudden his his attempts it, PJ's attempts will probably stay around five even if he, he shoots better but Tim's if he starts hitting more five turns into eight you know or nine or something like that and then, if I had to bet on one to come around I think it would be Tim just because we've just seen Tim kind of go through slumps and then he'll we know that he will shoot himself out of a slump and it feels like he has he still has the same green light as any time before so he does you know if i and so i i would just kind of yeah i if i had to pick one i think that would be tim would be the one i would say yeah he's the one i put yeah anyway eventually we hope that like the role players need to start making some of these threes the ones that we mentioned before Derek jones jr needs to take a few more i think exum probably needs to take a few more because they are actually shooting well but uh, they can win games without those guys shooting well. They've proven it already, and so we're just figuring out new ways the Mavs can win games. Let's talk about those games, though. The most important games the last stretch of the season, if you had to pick a game or two games that are the most important, what are they? Oh, it's the games next week. It's the it's the Kings, you know, the double games against the Kings. Their first Kings game is on a second night of a back-to-back, and then you get two nights – you know, off in Sacramento, and then you got another Kings game. We're right there in the standings. Um, you know, we're 0-2 versus the Kings so far in the series this year. You just got to win those games, man. Like, they're just yes. – they're really important if you want to try to avoid the play-in. Um, you know, <clears throat> I said this the other day uh, on the corner three about – I think a lot of people have referenced this Mavs team as this – uh, you know, this roller coaster team where, man, it's been up and down or Jekyll and Hyde, or I don't know what kind of Mavs team. And I kind of like zag a little bit. I'm like, actually, I feel like they've kind of told us who they are. Like they struggle against really good teams. And I had records to back that up. I don't have them in front of me now. They've been really good against bad teams. And it's like, they're, they're like 21 and five, you know, over the, you know, this season against teams under 500. And then the last time I checked, I think they're like 17 and 25 or 24 yeah 18 to 24 yeah against you know over 500 teams we know luca is like an mvp guy who's going to put up mvp numbers almost every game and we know they struggle defensively and they're not a very good defensive team i'm like those four things right there kind of like i kind of know who this team is for in in that like scale of things so if they just stay in that box then it's a good box to be in for the end of the year because you play a lot of teams under 500 and if there's ever been a time trust me we have done this podcast (laughs) for over six years together (laughs) and we know when they lose senseless games against bad teams victory i mean victory park is like just just leave it alone because people are rioting when you lose and i mean can you imagine over this final stretch of you know of the year and they they like they they get put into the play in because they lose a game against detroit or charlotte i mean these are some of the games that they're going to have at the end of the year so like you got on paper what you want as far as playing teams under 500 over the last course of the season, but it's the Kings games and the ones I'm scared of the most though, the two Rockets games, they're playing good basketball right now and they're feisty and I'm scared of those. The Rockets ones are the next most important games. The play in are the most important, the play in quote unquote, because it's the, the Kings. Those two games are the most important. The next is those Rockets games plus the Spurs game because they're in your division. They're in the Southwest division. And if you go by tiebreaker wise, with with the Pelicans and with the Kings, you go head to head record. Well, they they could be tied two to two if the Mavs win both the Kings games. Then it goes who's leading their division, and likely the Kings won't be leading their division against the Clippers, and may, maybe the Mavs with the Pelicans either. And so then it goes what's your record in your division? And so then you have to win those extra games to be, have a better division record. And so yeah, it's the Kings games are the most important, and then it's their division games which are. The two games against the Rockets, who don't have Shingun anymore. That's a little difference than what they've had before. And then the San Antonio game. Those are super, super important. I'll also add the two Warriors games. I mean, they got to win. Those are going to be, 
yeah, those are massive too. When you know when when it comes down to, I mean, they're a playing team right now. They're trying to move up, but yeah, you got you got to win these games. You're supposed to win right now. And then look, I mean, they just played Denver, and most people didn't think they would win that game, and they pulled it out. So. All right, now let's look at the schedule. Last 14 games of the season. Let's go through them one by one, and let's predict wins, losses. On I'm ready. I'm excited. I love doing this <laughs> uh, because everybody would have picked them to lose against Denver, so that's why we don't do this. <laughs> and then I love, you know, you can look at the end of the season and be like, they're playing the Thunder on April 14th. Who the heck is going to be playing in that game? So... <laughs> Who knows? The Thunder could want to play that game. They could zag whenever... They, they could, sit, yeah. Guys. And they could play. They guys. could want to get revenge on the Mavs again. So I don't know. I mean, what what if a lot for Shea MVP? Who knows? What what if it comes down to like them losing that game to to play Dallas and they like want to play Dallas? Oof! And then how spicy would that be for like everything if they like lose it on purpose to play Dallas in the playoffs or something? Spicy. Or if they got a win, and they're like, we're gonna beat you now, and we'll beat you in the first round too. Yeah. But they could finish in the in top one or two in the West. So it's looking like it's them or Denver, I guess. So can I yeah, plug we'll see. can I plug something real quick? You got something to plug? I got something to plug. Yeah, so next week uh, I'm launching my own show on uh Studio Four or in Studio 41 on uh the Mavericks YouTube channel and podcast stuff. It's gonna be called Welcome to Mavs Land. Bam. So it'll be fun. It'll it'll just be uh kind of similar vibes as this and uh i'll have guests on some weeks i'll go solo but it'll be every monday so it's once a week every monday morning you can listen to it and i'll have fun stuff i'll play videos different things and i have like the whole the whole like archive of mavs highlights and videos that i can i have at my disposal that i can play and do different stuff with so uh yeah and then you know nick has got to join me on for it as a guest so We'll have some fun on there. I'm here. I'm here. I'm, I'm still. I'll still be on the run by then, but <laughs> when it starts, <laughs> my internet is just broken in my house. Hopefully, in, in case back. anyone was really worried about me, my internet was just broken. So, <laughs> blink, blink four times if you can hear me. Okay. There you go, guys. Appreciate everybody for hanging out with us on Lockdown Maps. Uh, go subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all that. And uh, thanks so much for listening to Lockdown Maps. Peace out.